and a warm greetings and salutations to all of you, uh, as well as my apologies for having to cancel class on Thursday. Uh, as you can tell, I'm still not quite exactly where I should be. Um, however, I'm at least in somewhat better shape. Therefore, I'm going to make a couple of videos that will cover the material that we missed on Thursday. So, uh, I spent basically all of Tuesday setting up what was going to be the general equilibrium that we were going to be playing with in this model prior to the implementation of various shocks that we were going to be interested in. Now, one of the things that I had mentioned in class was that this is a more... Ooh, I bet that sounded wonderful for you guys. Oh, well. That was quick. <clears throat> now, if we get our setup here, So far, nothing has changed, right? Oh, now something's changed. All right. Whereas we had the just the aggregate supply <clears throat> in the real business cycle model, what we have here is a long run aggregate supply. And in addition to that, we also have a short-run aggregate supply. What's the difference between the two? Well, the difference is that the long-run aggregate supply is independent of prices, whereas the short-run aggregate supply is not. The short-run aggregate supply is not independent of prices because in the short run in this model prices are sticky they're slow to adjust however <clears throat> this is our short run or I guess really the short and long run equilibrium when everything is at rest. All right, so this is going to be the general equilibrium <clears throat> in this model. This is going to be where we start all the time. All right, now, <clears throat> like I said, this model is a little bit more demand determined than is supply determined, whereas the real business cycle model was purely supply determined. <clears throat> In this particular model, demand does play a little bit of a role. And I'm going to show you exactly how demand plays a little bit of a role through this next shock. Let's see if I can actually uh, raise this up a bit. Try to get rid of that glare. Go. It's one way to get rid of the glare. <clears throat> Try to fix that one in post. Okay, so. As I said, this model is a little bit more demand determined. Therefore, what we're gonna do is we're first going to look at demand side shocks. 
So I would say take your pick whether we want uh, like a government spending shock or a monetary policy shock, but uh, pfft, too bad uh, you don't really get to because this is video, this isn't class. Therefore, what I'm going to do is, uh, well, I'm going to draw out a monetary policy shock. And I guess we're going to do it with a purple marker. Now, remember, under a monetary policy shock, First thing that happens in this shock, the source of this shock, we'll say, is an increase in the money supply. <coughs> Excuse me. So the amount of money in the economy is going to increase. Now, when that happens, right, the LM curve is going to shift to the right. Because remember, whenever money increases, the LM curve moves to the right. So the LM curve and money are always going to be moving in the same direction. Right? So we increase the money supply which triggers a shift in the LM curve, giving us this, we'll call it LM1, right? Now, that's initially going to give us a lower real interest rate, and we draw this dotted line down to a point that is basically, well, not basically, is horizontal, with this equilibrium price level. Now we see we've got E of PT here rather than just PT. That E of PT is the expected price level in the economy. We have that expected price level because we're assuming that when we are in a long run equilibrium, all firms have been able to update their prices. When all firms have been able to update their prices, everyone is sitting at the expected price level because that's where they expect prices to be. You know, where where they expect prices to be in the long run. So we are sitting at this expected price level. However, what we see is, uh, well, we're not really, what's going on? Oh, well, first off, here's what's going on. When the LM curve shifts out, remember the aggregate demand curve shifts out. All right, so <clears throat> that's where our new aggregate demand is. We'll call it AD1, like that. All right, so that's where we currently are. Now, we got to figure out, though, what the hell's going on here, because, well, do we, if we followed the real business cycle model, we would just sort of hike on up to that long-run aggregate supply curve. We'd have higher prices and no change in output. But there's a short-run and then a long run, right? So the short run is what's gonna happen well in the short run. So it's gonna be like a, an almost immediate response to the shock. And then there's gonna be an adjustment phase. So we're just gonna talk about the short run impact in this particular video. The next video I'm gonna talk about what the long run response is. So what happens is we were here, right? But Prices can adjust at least a little bit, so we're going to hike on up over here. To what we call, I don't know, PT1. Right, so as we do that, well, we've got to draw the dotted line back up to here. Because remember, as prices increase, the LM curve is going to shift back in because the LM curve moves in opposite directions of prices. I'll say sum, under, underline, some prices are flexible. The LM shifts in a little bit but then what we need to do 
is this is our short run equilibrium output. So we trace this over to here. All right, so aggregate demand shifts out. It would be nice if output was here, at least for the consumer, but it won't be because some of the prices can adjust, just not all of them. So some of the prices can adjust. So the LM curve moves in just a little bit, and that's where we trace out over to our production function. Call it YT1. And because we need more output, well, we're gonna need more labor. So because we need more labor, well, labor is going to increase. So we draw this dotted line up, up to this point here on the labor supply curve, and that's going to be triggering a labor demand shock. like that. So this is the short run equilibrium within this model. So what happened is the LM curve shifts out because the central bank decided to print more money. Now some prices can change, not all of them. So because some prices can change, the LM curve is going to shift in to a point that is directly above where aggregate demand and short run aggregate supply intersect. You can see if you just trace this dotted line up, you'll get that, right? So this is our short run equilibrium following a monetary policy shock. Now this is the easy part. All we do is just trace the dotted line down and over to our production function. We're gonna see output goes up because output goes up, they're gonna need more workers in order to fill that demand for output, which means there's gonna be an increase in labor demand leading to higher wages. So in the short run, What I'll say is that the money supply goes up, prices go up, output goes up, that's actually not quite done, we also have this Let's say this, money's gonna increase, the interest rate ultimately is gonna decrease, prices will go up, output will go up, labor is gonna need to go up in order to satisfy that new demand for output, and wages are gonna go up. And that right there will be the set of signed responses to a monetary policy shock within the new Keynesian model. And uh, the long run response will be following shortly.